Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello, my friends. That the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the God Most High, may come down upon you all right now, in this moment, to give you the understanding, the understanding of His holy and glorious word. That with this understanding of the Holy Spirit, you may, you all may be able to conduct your lives accordingly to the will of God and to enjoy the benefits that the Most High God has been given to all of us which is all the nature. God wants you to be His glory in this world. This is the greatest desire of God. You who are a mother, you who are a father, you have children. What is your greatest desire for your children? What is it? Ah, Bishop, I want my son, my daughter, to be well married, to have condition, to have a comfortable life, a healthy life, that they may be people with health, with vigor, which means you, I, we, human beings, we want the best to our children, the best, more or less, does not work. It has to be the best, isn't it? Very well. This is what God wants for every human creature. And it's so strong, the desire, the will of God, that we may have the best of this earth, which is written, you eat the best of the earth the best of the land. God promises that we would eat the best out of the best of the earth. However, when the son, the daughter, is rebellious, what do you, father, mother, can do to change that situation? Your son, your daughter, is involved with drugs, bad companies, is rebellious. Anyway, is a person that is hard to deal with, to live with. What do you do? What can you do? Tell me. You will say, nothing, Bishop, nothing. I would like to do something, but I cannot do a thing. My hands and feet are tied. Exactly what God feels. Exactly what God feels before this chaotic picture from this world. He feels like his feet and hands are tied. Why? Because he cannot, him, because of his righteousness, he cannot break this righteousness and impose force the human creature to obey him. Neither we can do the same with our children. Isn't that true? You give it all to your children, and when you least expect, they are living a life of disorder, a disorderly life. And you say, what did I do? What was my mistake? Do you know what your mistake was? You to have given everything that they wanted and not what they needed. This is the reality. Isn't that true? God gives us what we need. What we need. Not, but not what we want. Because if we were to be satisfied on our desires, then we would dive into hell because of the vanities, greed, trifles, 
that this world offer us. God wants the best for you, dear friends. And I'm speaking, I'm speaking by the Holy Spirit. He wants the best for you. However, he won't subject himself to our will. He is the one who is God. He is the Father, the Creator. He is the Generator, the Patron. He is who is God and Lord. And we are the ones who have to subject ourselves to His will. But what is the will of God to my life, Bishop? Read the Bible and you will see His will to your life. We have been speaking in these past few days about the story, the true story. The only one, only one person could tell this story, tell this story, this fact. No one else, no writer, no author could have condition to narrate what happened there in Babylon upon the empire of Nabucodonosor, when the Jews were exiled to Babylon. And then there was the rich man, whose name was not mentioned or talked about because God did not want to honor him. He who honors me, I will honor them. Those who despise me will be despised. God didn't want to honor him, to mention, to speak about his name. So he only calls him rich man. But the poor Lazarus, who kept, preserved inside of him, the faith, the hope, on one day to be with the God of his father Abraham, this one was saved. And the rich man, who did not give attention to the word of God, even though he knew it, he had knowledge about it, he kept the Sabbath, believed in the racket every day of the week. He was a sinful man from the top of his head to the sole of his feet because of his riches, his wealth, because he despised the word of God. He did not count on the God of his parents. Then, when he died, he was carried to hell. And it's impressive. I was meditating just now. It is striking on how this biblical account of the story, a story of the rich man and Lazarus is enlightening because only, only Jesus could tell this story because he was before all things. He is before all things. He saw the suffering of the rich man and he saw the joy of Lazarus at Abraham's bosom. He saw it. He witnessed that. And when he came to the world, he tells us what he saw it. And obviously, he who believes, amen. He who does not, what can we do? It won't change a thing. But this is what happens. When you die, when I die, when we die, either one or the other, our soul will go straight to God or our soul will go straight to hell. There's no other option. There's no other option. It's here, written, clearly. So it was that the beggar died, Lazarus, and was carried by the angels. The angels came to carry his soul. The angels came to carry his soul. But the rich man... Now, when he died, then he says, and in hell, Jesus says, in hell, which means he went immediately to hell. He was taken by the demons to hell. Those demons that you saw already manifesting in the universal church, they came to carry the soul of the rich man and took him to hell. So only Jesus could tell 
show me, speak, teach about the two destinations, heaven or hell. And he, he who has the right to choose is us. We are the ones who decide either heaven or hell. You decide the final destination of your soul because your soul will live eternally. If you say, oh, I don't believe, okay. But when you die, then, dear friends, you will see with your own eyes, what it happens. But why to wait for us to die and then to take an immediate decision and preserve that what is eternal in your life, which is your soul? Because your body can be filled with makeup, looking wonderful, fit, but your soul, dear friends, is eternal. Your body starts to shrink and shrink. It gets to a point that we are completely surrendered, like an old fruit that shrinks. Very well. The holy text that you should read, reread, meditate, ask, search more with the Holy Spirit and He will guide you, He will give you the direction, He will show you that either if you are a creature that He chose because He knows that you are sincere, once he, knowing that you were sincere, you having the opportunity, you're going to choose his son, Jesus, as your Lord and Savior, then he will enlighten your thoughts. But if you despise what is written, you are an iffy type of person, you live a disgraceful life, but you are iffy, you think this and that, you can think whatever you want to think. But if you don't believe, dear friends, hell is the final destination of your soul. And what can we do? And you who believe, you already have within yourself the joy, the happiness that God gives you, which is the assurance of the salvation of your soul. God bless you. And until tomorrow, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen.